Today I've got something a little different than the typical SDR stuff I've been showing on this channel. Uh, what I've got here are two Meshtastic nodes that I've built from these Helltech V3 boards and these M5 stack uh, card keyboards. So um, if you don't know what Meshtastic is, it's a really cool LoRa-based mesh networking system that basically self-forms a mesh and finds routes for messages to hop across different nodes to get from um, client to client. So I've got two clients here. And in this setup, this client will just directly send a message here and vice versa. But imagine that I had uh, one in the middle and these two were out of the direct line of sight range that one in the middle would act as a hop for the message to get through all the way um, across maybe a mountain even. So I can do a quick demonstration here, um, but I wanna actually show you guys how to set these up in such a way that you've got your own private mesh because these are on a public channel out of the box. And also show you like how far just these can go um, from point to point, and then we'll expand that by adding um, another node in this series. So I can just type a message here, hey, and this will send out to the broadcast channel, which goes to everyone on the, on the mesh, and this guy has received a hey. I can say hi back, send that out. And there you go, hi. So these are considered standalone um, nodes because you've got everything contained, uh, just the battery pack and uh, everything's here. And um, they're not attached to a, a, a client. Um, well, actually this one is. So instead of the battery pack, I've got the computer hooked up and the computer is acting as the client. Um, you can use your phone as a client through Bluetooth instead, and that basically replaces the keyboard. So here is the client, and you can see the hey message that we sent out from this node. Um, these previous messages are just what I was playing around with, um, but you can see all of these peers. So these peers are other people that have set up their mesh tested devices around me and uh, have not configured you know anything special out of the box so they're just connecting to the public channel most likely um, but they have this, the same modulation parameters uh, and that's why i can see them here so the cool thing about like a uh, client is you can type messages through it and that'll come through to the other clients, um, just like it would is if you typed it on the standalone device. I kind of prefer the standalone device because I want to walk around and not rely on anything else. And that's kind of the point of Meshtastic. It's like, you don't want to rely on uh, your phone. You don't want to rely on especially any kind of like uh, network infrastructure. Uh, n not that you are when you're using your phone because the phone doesn't use its cellular communications to actually do anything to act as a client. It just uses Bluetooth directly to the board. Um, but you kind of get what I mean. It's just cool to have this uh, handheld device that has everything. And I actually found something just by coincidence. Someone on YouTube has the same setup and has made a 3D printed uh, enclosure design. So I think I might go ahead and, and take his design, maybe print it as is or modify it a little bit to put this in a nice little box. Um, but that was cool to see because I don't think this configuration is too common. A lot of people use these keyboards with a, a different board, like a LilyGo or, um, yeah, I haven't seen them connected to Heltex too frequently. It was actually not very well documented on how you connect the keyboard to what pins, um, but I found that in, in the code and I will show you guys exactly how to do that. Okay, so I've got the Helltech board just as it comes in the mail. And when these come 
in the mail, they're shipped with just some other firmware from Helltech. So I'm not even sure what it does. It's looking for some Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, I don't know. So what we want to do is flash the fresh board with um, Meshtastic firmware. And um, that'll be the first step to setting up this standalone device. So to do that, we actually need to hold down the programming button while we plug in the USB stick, uh, connector. And that'll prevent it from booting up the application that's on there, and it's now in a programming mode. So we'll go over to the computer and use a website called flasher.meshtastic.org. You wanna select your target device, Helltech V3 for us, select your firmware version as whatever is the latest stable when you're watching this, and hit flash. Now, a uh, dialog will pop up telling you that you need to do this um, programming mode boot, uh, and then you'll choose a baud rate. We are doing a full erase and install because there was no previous Meshtastic firmware on here. If there was, then we can just do an update, but we just wanna do full erase and install. So when I click this button, a few dialogs might pop up. You'll have to grant your browser permissions to access the serial ports, and then you'll have to pick the right um, serial port. In, in my case, it's this USB serial 0001. Um, if you don't see this CP2102 listed, either you're not connected or you don't have the drivers on your computer for this UART bridge. Um, I'll try and put a link for this in, in the description if I, if I can find it. So uh, we'll hit connect and this will go off and do its thing. When this is done, you should see Meshtastic boot up and we can go to the next step, which is to configure it. So to configure it, we're going to go to a different site called client.meshtastic.org. And here we do something similar where we do a new connection through serial and select our device here, which was already connected because um, we configured the COM port in, in the flasher. So Chrome remembered it. So cool. Now we are in the client and you'll see the peers start to pop up. This is interesting because there's not even an antenna on this guy. That, that's how powerful this um, radio protocol is. So we'll just leave the antenna off for now. What we want to do is start some configurations. So we'll go to the config tab and there's so much to do here, but as just sort of an introduction, I want to go through a few things and, and what I think are um, the minimal required set of things to change to make an effective um, mesh and specifically a private one. That was not easy to find exactly how to do. So I wanna show you guys just how to do that. Cause when you set this up out of the box, like I said, you're gonna be talking to anybody around your area. So, um, the first thing is to go to the LoRa tab and set the region to wherever you are. Uh, I'm going to pick US. And then you want to hit the Save button. So the device should reboot as you do these changes. You, you want to make sure to hit the Save button on each page. Um, the other thing is just good to know. The role will depend on what kind of device you're making. So, so we're making clients today. But if I wanted to make a device that like didn't even have a keyboard or, or, or a, any type of messaging client attached to it, I just wanted it to act as like a node so that clients can use it as a hop to other areas, you know, further away, I would change this to maybe something like repeater. Um, we'll get to that in a later video. If we want to have the keyboard on this guy, which we do, you need to enable what's called the canned messages mo module, which is in the module config and canned. So the history behind canned messages 
uh, the term, because it's a very confusing term, is before the keyboards were supported, you could use a like a smaller keyboard that just had basically an arrow button or even some kind of like rotary dial that would just pick canned messages like, hi, where are you? Um, you couldn't even reply to where are you with a canned message because it's literally just a, a list of messages that you could pick from and send um, help or something. So the term canned messages stayed around, but we're using this to actually support uncanned, fully typable messages with this keyboard. So we have to hit enable canned messages. And we also have to allow the input source. See, here, here's what I was mentioning, the rotary encoder, the up and down arrow encoder. And what we have now is the card keyboard. So let's just type in card keyboard. Okay. So that is what we need to do to enable the keyboard. Okay. Um, so now if we went ahead and soldered the uh, keyboard onto this guy, we would have basically the same setup that I had shown you before. And you could communicate with people that are on the same um, default channel. So to change the default channel, we will go to channels and modify this pre-shared key, uh, which is hidden. But I can tell you that the pre-shared key is um, AQ equals equals, which corresponds to a binary byte of, of one. So this is the public, well, it's a private key, but it's the public private key. Um, what we wanna do is generate a private private key. So a key that no one else would ever randomly collide on, if, even if they generate their own key. So to do that, um, we actually have to pick a 16 byte or 32 byte number if you wanna be crazy, um, and take the base 64 encoded uh, version of that text and paste that into this pre-shared key. If you try and do this any other way, it's not going to work. Um, so I'm not gonna actually generate a proper uh, random number here. I'm just typing in some random hexadecimal um, number. And this has to be uh, 16 bytes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so we have our 16 byte hexadecimal number and we've base 64 encoded that to this text and we'll just copy that and paste that. Hit submit and you'll see save channel. So now we've effectively put this guy in a private mesh. It may still use the uh, existing meshes out there for the actual transport of the packets, um, but any of those devices will not be able to decry decrypt or even show that the message was was received. Um, well, maybe they can see it was received, but they, they won't be able to decode what you said. And and you're not the, the important thing is you're not going to be receiving any of their transmissions on on your um, device. So if you set up your device to, for example, sound a buzzer, if you get a message, then, then you'll know it's an important message and not coming from the public spam. If for whatever reason you do wanna get off even like the physical mesh itself, um, which I don't know why you'd wanna do that because you're just, you're just gonna get more coverage with this, but if you wanna be super off grid, um, then what you'll need to do is actually change the LoRa um, 
the LoRa uh, modulation parameter, so the waveform settings. So they have presets for different ranges and, and bandwidths. Um, you can change a combination of these to something unique, and that'll set you completely off of like the default mesh. Um, somebody that uses the same configuration could theoretically receive um, and be part of your mesh, since there aren't that many combinations um, that you can do here. Um, but again, since you had set a high entropy uh, encryption key, they won't be able to see the messages on your mesh. Only your devices that have that same key, which, oh yeah, let's not forget that one. So let's make sure that's saved somewhere safe. Um, only those devices can interact with you in terms of a, a data standpoint. So we'll go ahead and put that key on, on the other devices we have here and go out and do some testing. 